For no-code builders, nothing used to be more annoying than getting a Zap set up only to realize Zapier didn't actually support the actions you wanted to automate. Thankfully, Zapier has added a new beta feature to create custom actions with a simple AI prompt. Today, I'm going to show you how to use app extensions to build almost any custom action that you want inside of Zapier. No coding required. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use automation and AI tools to streamline repetitive processes for our members. If you'd like to learn more about X-Ray and our services, just go to our website, xray.tech. To see more workflow automation tips, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for updates every single week, and turn on those notifications too. In this video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know to get started with app extensions in Zapier. I'll explain how they work, and I'll show you how you can create and use app extensions step by step. We'll be using AI prompts to build our extension today, so no coding knowledge is required, although being familiar with web development and APIs may make things a bit easier. Let's get started. First, let's start with the basics. What is an app extension? An app extension is a way to add a custom action to an existing Zapier integration. It's useful when Zapier doesn't have native support for whatever you're trying to automate. To easily see what Zapier or other automation providers natively support, you can just do a quick search for the apps you want to automate on xray.tools. If you don't see your desired action in the list, then it's not supported. For instance, Zapier never supports automatically deleting objects in your software. So if you'd like to add a delete step to an automation, you'll need to do so with an app extension. You can use app extensions to automate any action that's supported by the relevant application's API. Just Google your app's API docs to see what is and isn't supported. Most apps' API docs are publicly available online, so feel free to explore. And if you'd like to learn more about APIs and low-code building in general, we've got some helpful videos linked in the resources board down below. A finished app extension will closely resemble a normal action in Zapier. Once it's built, you'll be able to select it from the appropriate app's event list, fill in its required inputs, and use it like any other action. Just note that you're not currently able to create custom triggers, just actions. Extensions are in beta, so they're still evolving as Zapier continues to build out this feature. Some simple actions will only require filling in a URL and identifying a few key variables, while some more complex actions will require some scripting. However, any action can be built manually or created with a quick AI prompt. So even if you've never written an API call before, you can start adding custom actions to your zaps. In this video, we're going to focus on how to build an app extension with an AI prompt. If you'd like a video about building an app extension manually, let us know in the comments down below. But for now, let's start building an app extension with AI. For this tutorial, we're going to use our Zapier extension to automatically delete records from Airtable. I've already got a trigger in place for this zap. It runs whenever the record enters the archived, ready to delete view in my tasks table. If we open up Airtable, we can see the ready to delete views conditions. The status must be archived and the created date must be more than one year ago. We can see there's a few records in this table that already match those conditions. Now we just need to go back to Zapier and add a step to delete. However, Zapier won't have an action for that because Zapier never offers any delete actions for their integrations. This is probably to protect users from accidentally deleting their data, but now we can create a delete action using Zapier extensions. Before we continue though, I wanna give you a quick warning first. Always be careful when using automations to delete data. Deletion will usually be permanent, so back up any important information before proceeding and make sure you choose the right app database, table, profile, and other information in your automation. Even though this base is just mock data, I'll export a CSV to back it up just in case. With your data backed up, let's dive into creating a Zapier extension with AI. To create an extension, begin by opening up a Zap. Currently, you can't create extensions for triggers. They only work for actions and searches. Hopefully Zapier will update this feature soon to include triggers too. For now, you'll need to create a trigger manually as you normally would in Zapier. For our example, we've already got an Airtable trigger, like I covered earlier. Give your trigger a test to pull in some data. Here, I've got an old record that's ready to be deleted. Next, add an action. Pick the app you want to use. I'll use Airtable since I want to delete a record from an Airtable base. Then, click on the Event dropdown. 
At the top of the menu, you should see an option that says Custom Action Beta. Click on Create Custom Action to open up the Zapier extensions page. At the top of the page, you'll see this large section where you can enter an AI prompt. If you scroll down the page, you'll see fields and menus which will let you build the extension manually. But for this video, we'll focus on building with AI exclusively. After we enter a prompt, all these sections will be filled in for us. So go back to the AI prompt section at the top of the page. Enter a prompt describing what you want to build. Be direct and be as specific as possible. In our case, our prompt is going to be short and simple. Delete a record in Airtable. Once it's all set, click Generate to submit your prompt. Next, you'll see three options that attempt to recreate what you've described in your prompt. You can read the summary of each option for more information about what the action does. Note that the API method will be listed here in the top left. For our extension, the method is always delete since we want to delete a record. If you want to create an object, you'll see post as the method. To update, you'll see either patch or put. And for a search, you'll see get. Zapier also includes the exact API route here, but unfortunately it's heavily truncated and we can only see the start, which doesn't really help us much. All we can see is that it's accessing the Airtable API, which is pretty obvious. To see more information about any of these potential extensions, click on Build. Once you click Build, Zapier will actually start creating the extension in the background. This can take a little while. When the extension is ready, you'll have the choice to either preview it or use it right away. It's best to take a closer look at what the AI put together before continuing, so click on Preview. In the Preview window, you can see more details about the extension the AI created. Under API, you'll see a small table with the method and URL being used in the extension. Just as before, we can see that the method is delete, but now we can see the full URL. The curly brackets indicate variables that you'll need to fill in when you add the step to your zap. For our example, we'll need to identify the base, table, and record ID. If custom code is required, it will be written here in the body section. It won't be necessary to enter anything here for our example, since we're just deleting the record identified in the URL. For other actions though, you might need to add more information here. In general, the AI should take care of it for you. Under Input Fields, you can see all of the information that can be filled in when using the extension as a step in one of your zaps. In this table, you can see several attributes for each input field. First, we've got the key being used behind the scenes. This is what goes into the URL, for instance. Then, we've got the label that users will actually see, with proper spaces and capitalization. Next, there's some help text to explain what the data is being used for. Since not all fields will always be necessary in an action, the next column notes whether the field in question is required or not. Any required field will have the word true in this column. After that, we can see what data type is used here. All of our fields are strings, meaning they just need to be text. Other field types include number, date, time, etc. Dynamic refers to whether or not the field is filled in with a dynamic drop-down menu. If the field is set up as a drop-down with multiple choices, you'll see those choices listed under Choices. And finally, you'll see the placeholder text for each field. Note that these fields here won't always match up one-to-one -one with the variables in your extension's URL. That just happens to be the case in our example. As you build your own extension, you may see some variables in the body portion instead. Take a moment to review all of this info. If it looks good, click on Use. The preview window will close, and you can scroll down to see your extension settings. Everything you see here should match what you already saw in the preview, but now you can edit or update anything that you'd like. Just make sure to reference your app's API docs to make sure that your edits are correct. On this screen, you can also add query parameters or additional headers to further refine the data created or retrieved in your app extension. But that won't be necessary for our delete action. Once you've confirmed all of your settings, your extension should be ready to go. Click Save to complete the extension and commit any changes that you made. 
Then publish it so it will show up in your actions list. Now you can return to your Zap. Refresh the tab in your browser so Zapier retrieves the latest data from your extension. Go back to the action in progress and click on event. You should see your new extension as an option. Click on it to use it. Sign in or choose an existing authorized account to use for this action. Now you can configure the custom extension like any other action in Zapier. For our delete a record action, I'll just fill in static values pointing to the right table and base. Then I'll retrieve the record ID dynamically from the trigger. Once you've filled in all the necessary fields, give your action a test. Before I test this delete record step, I'll quickly switch over to Airtable. Here's the record the zap should delete. Now I'll test the step. We can see a 200 response code, so the step was successful. You can check out the resources board for a fun reference guide to every possible server code. If it hadn't worked, we would have seen a 400 or 500 code instead. However, it's always possible that your extension may run correctly as configured, returning a 200 message, but may not be configured the way that you want it to work. So it's always best to check the relevant apps just to be sure. I'll open up Airtable, and sure enough, the record is gone. Again, as I noted earlier, be very careful when using a delete action. It will permanently and immediately delete your data, so make sure you've configured everything correctly and back up any important data before proceeding. If you need to update your extension, just go to zapier.com slash app slash extensions. That URL is in the resources board linked below for easy reference. Then select the extension you want to review and make any edits you'd like. You can also add new extensions from this page. Zapier doesn't always support every action you might want to automate right out of the box. But with Zapier extensions built by AI prompts, it's easier than ever to add any functionality you want to your Zaps. Give it a shot today and let us know in the comments down below what you think. How will you be using Zapier extensions in your automations? What improvements would you like to see to this new beta feature? And what other Zapier or AI topics would you like us to explore on this channel? If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the resources board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation, and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.